Okay, YouTube, it's your boy Jason Barb and Educator back to you again with a, some more good stuff for you. Here today we have a tutorial on how to do a ball fade with detachable blades. I'm starting out doing a ball fade with my 5 off, balling out, framing out, setting up for the ball fade. So you want to get your 5 off first, you want to go and you want to ball them out. If you're a beginner, you definitely want to make your line straighter than I made mine. You know, I was just kind of breezing through this here, trying to break it down. Get through the hard cut. I'm using the Andes. I'm using the Andes Ceramic Advanced Detachable Blade Clipper, one of my favorite clippers. Real lightweight. No maintenance, and they got power and speed to cut through the hair. I can bottom out real good, and then you want to take your next blade, which would be your OA blade, and you want to create another section above the bar out line. If you got room, the more space you got, the, the wider you can make your section. You can go in and make about a one inch section because I have plenty of room to work with. The less space you got to work with on your fade, or the higher your fade is, that's the less space you use. You may want to do like a half inch or three quarter inch. After that, I got the 1A blade here, and I'm going up another inch, creating another section with the 1A blade. Doing the framework, the framing out the cut. Now we got the number two blade, and we're going up above the parial ridge, above the crest area, and we're going to break it all down above that, all in that crest area. We're going to break that hair down, setting it up for the fade with the framework. We're framing it out because we're going to do a one and a half with the grain on top. That two, that two against the grain around the parial area is going to blend right into that one and a half with the grain on top. Now I got the one and a half blade. And I'm going to go get the line out between the 1A and the 2. So, I'm just going to connect that 1A and that 2 by taking that line out with the 1.5 in between those two blades. You see I'm breaking the top down and cutting it down, smoothing over with the 1.5 with the grain. I had the one and a half already on the clipper, taking the line out between the one and the two. I went ahead and attacked the top since I knew that the top was going to be used with the one and a half blade as well. Now, swing back around there and do a little more cleanup work, a little more blending around that two and that one, between that two and that one A. Next, we're gonna get the number one blade, and we're gonna try to erase that line between the OA and the 1A. It's called fading down. We started out fading up by breaking it down, setting it up, and we're getting up, come back in the blades in between to erase the line. Now, remember, the number one blade has a slight gap between the one and the 1A. So, a lot of times you have to go in your toes and come out on your heels when you got that one on there and kind of feather it and blend. You kind of freehand a little bit with that one. Here we got the triple out blade on. Trying to erase that ball line between the five off and the OA. The triple out is uh, on factory set normally, uh, but I have mine pushed a little closer so it can take that ball line out. Normally the triple out will come right behind the OA and blend out right below the OA. However, I got mine pushed up a little bit, so you see it takes out the line between the 5 out line, ball line, and OA. However, it may create a new line into the OA section. And, it, and that's why I'm kind of kind of feathering out a little bit. Coming out, with my flicking my wrist out as I go up, trying to bring it into the OA. But I see I'm going to have to go back with my... You'll, as you'll see in a second, I'll go back with my OA to kind of lighten that weight up 
that I left in there, being that my triple R is pushed up some. So I'll be going back and forth here between my OA, my one, and my triple R. Just doing blend work. You know, it's all about the skill of flicking the wrist, going in on your toes, coming out with your heels. You'll see me kind of use my corner of my blade in some spots. Some spots will just be dark, you know, a little bit thicker. And you don't want to use the full length of your blade because you might lighten a thinner spot. But you don't want to lighten up. So you're going to see me go in here throughout this fading process. And I'm going to be tapping some areas just with the right or left side of my blade, tilting it on this corner, using only two to three teeth at a time. Be sure to just blend only the areas that I want to target very, very precisely. You can see there I set the clipper with the grain a little bit to blend in below where that one and a half with the grain was on top. You see area right there, in this area right here, there's a crease in his head. Uh, also referred to as differentiation in cranial topography. It means that he got dents in his head. And in those creases and dents, you're going to have a very thick, dark area that you have to go in with a smaller blade than you actually use in, that, in the area. And you only want to touch only the dark crease area, light it up to create the illusion that it's even all over on top. As you can see here, I'm back down there, pretty much my triple out again, and my OA is working that phase, bringing it to a, a total blurry blend with all the catchable blades. There's no adjustable clip to use here. And as I work, I blend this fade out, you're going to see it all come together. You see me switching back and forth here, like I said, between the 1, the OA, and the triple R. Just to protect the areas that need to be blended out. And you got a dark area. And you see that your fade is not complete. You feel free to change the blade and go back in. And where you see I'm working with the corners of my blade, just to lightly touch the areas I want to fade out. This is the work you have to do when you got to catch the blade clipper. It requires more skill coming from the barber. You have to use your skill on the wrist flicking, going in on your toes, coming out on your heel. Here I pull out my retro T cut. Trimmer. You can see me edging the line. I'm do some detail work with the trimmer. And you see here I'm going over the top, moving it out, getting all the wild hair standing up. The detail work is very important. This will separate you from the average barber. It separates you from the barber that's still stuck doing ten dollar haircut. This will separate you and you command the money that you ask for for your service. I'm gonna go over the bottle area again, make sure it's clean with the trimmer. Getting in the crease of your head in the back, smoothing the area out, getting all the hair spots. You see I got my brush in my hand, removing any loose hair. Not to mistake it from her that's not cut. This is detail work, guys. This is, this is what makes you professional. This is what makes you salt after. Hitting that line a little bit more. And you can see that fade is blurry. It's been blended out. with detachable blade clip. No adjustable here. As you see, the full fade can be complete with just detachable blade clip. 
I must admit, when you came with detachable, detachable blade, clippers up, with adjustable, I feel like you can get a lot more done in a lot less time if you clean them up and a lot less work on the part of the barber with the clippers do the work. But when you're fading with all blades, as you can see, I gotta keep going back in, making sure that all the lines are out and everything's faded completely. The adjustable clipper, the clipper does a lot more to work for you. Please like, subscribe, and share.